Welcome to Fashion Sketching for Absolute Beginners. My name is Erica Schmitz and I founded My Body Model to create body positive fashion design tools for people who make clothing for bodies of all shapes and sizes. Be sure not to miss our first video in this series, part one, Get Started, with some tips and inspiration for beginning your sketching practice. This is part two, tops and bodices, drawing necklines. Today we're practicing how to draw nine different styles of necklines. Crew neck, scoop neck, v-neck, v-wrap, cutout scoop, mock turtleneck, dress shirt collar, sweetheart, and asymmetrical. For our sketches, we'll be referring to some of my favorite indie patterns for inspiration. You can create your own body model template made to your body measurements at mybodymodel.com. For this class, we'll be using the three models per page layout. If you'd like to sketch along with this video, print out at least three copies of your three models per page PDF template. All right, so we're gonna get started with a basic crew neckline using the Lou box top pattern from Sew DIY as our model. And first, let's take a look at the pattern flats that shows the basic design lines of the garment. And then we look at the model photo to see where those lines land on the body. And in drawing necklines, I like to put a, a couple of dots on my body model showing where the neckline begins and ends and also where on the chest, the midpoint of the neckline falls. And I use those as guidelines. So we can see in the model photo that the lines start really on either end of the collarbone and then really um, falls kind of right above the collarbone like that. And then the other thing to notice is that the neckline goes around the neck. So you wanna think of that curve or even a, a circular motion from behind the shoulder and neck going all the way around. So I'm just gonna draw a little line like that, and like that, and it goes around the body. So that's a basic crew neckline. And the next one we'll be looking at is a scoop neckline. And for that example, we'll use the Stacia dress and top pattern from Sew Liberated. And looking at the pattern illustrations, we see that it's a very wide and um, deep scoop neck. We can see that the sides of the scoop land at the very edges right before the tips of the shoulder. So they would probably be right where your bra strap lands. So I'm putting dots there to mark it. And then it's, it's a pretty low scoop. So I'm gonna just put a little dot um, looking at the, the chest area and the clavicle and where that scoop would fall and it would be somewhere around there. And then similarly to how we did it with the crew neckline, thinking of the neckline of the garment going around the shoulders and around the neck. So you kind of start it there and then you go around and around and around. So there is a scoop neckline. Next, we'll look at a V neckline, and for that example, we'll use the Sally jumpsuit from Closet Case Patterns. And looking first at the pattern flats, we can see the, the shape of the V, um, but that doesn't really tell us where it lands on the body, so it's also helpful to look at a model photo or two to see where those lines fall. And we can see that the V, the, the tip of the V, is pretty low, kind of right where your cleavage would start, right there. And it's also um, not a super wide V, um, and maybe just right around here at the edge of the clavicle. That looks about right. And again, thinking of it going around the body. So it starts there, go to V, then up again and around. So there's a v-neck. All right, so we'll go ahead and put those aside to finish up later. And starting with a fresh sketch template, we'll take a look at a v-wrap neckline using the example of the Suki kimono pattern by Helen's Closet. And looking at the pattern illustrations and the pattern flats, um, we can have a sense of um, 
all the different seam lines in the garment. And looking at the model photos, we can see where those lines fall on the body and use those guidelines for the sketch. So for this neckline, um, I'm actually, because it is a wrap, I want to think about where on the waistline those lines are going to end. And so on this figure, this, this line here marks the waist. Um, I want that knot to land right about here. And the neckline is going to stretch, or, or rather, the neckline is going to sweep from around the neck all the way down to that point on that end. And then on this side, it's going to go also around the neck and down like that. And this particular pattern um, has this extra, um, I guess we call it a binding, that would go around this way and then coming from behind the neck and down that way. And then later on we'll draw the rest of this garment, but that's the basic wrap v-neck from the Suki kimono pattern. Next we'll do the cut out scoop neckline from the washi dress pattern from Made by Ray. And we'll look first at the design flats to get a really good idea of where all the seam lines fall on that garment. And then we'll take a look at a model photo to see where they land on the body. So we can see here in this photo that that scoop cutout actually can go pretty low um, into the where the, the into your cleavage area. And I'm just gonna do a little U here, just like in the drawing. And then the rest of the neckline, you wanna make sure it comes from around the neck down to that little U cutout. And again, looking at where on the body that neckline starts or comes around the neck or the shoulders. And it's right around here based on that photo. So then I'm just gonna connect the dots, but also make sure it comes from back around the shoulder. Oops, that didn't work very well. This is more going like that. Okay, so I didn't like the way that side looked, so I'm just going to erase it. And I wanna make sure it dries first. And then I'm just gonna erase it with my pen. Try not to shake the table. All right, so that's the nice thing about these pens is they're erasable. Um, so I want that to be more of a scoop shape, like that. It's a little better. They're mostly even. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm gonna leave it there. Um, you can also, you know, keep finessing um, until it looks the way you want it to. But it does need to be perfect. So that is an example of the washi dress neckline. Okay, next we'll look at a mock turtleneck from the Nico top and dress pattern from True Bias. And look first at the pattern flats as usual, and then looking at the model photo. So this is a mock turtleneck, not a full turtleneck. Um, and so we wanna mark on the neck where it would go, it's right around here. And then mark also on the shoulders or the uh, what would you call this, where the neck meets the shoulders, where that point would go, and it's right around there. And it's a would be similar to the crew neck, a really tight, small curve here. And it's quite, uh, really just at the base of the neck. So I'm gonna put that line here, based on those images. And that, those give me my drawing guidelines. So the neckline is gonna come from behind the neck, around the neck, and then around. So you see that's a curved line. And then this one also is another seam line for the neckline. So we're gonna come around, around, and around. So that's going around the neck. And then we're just going to connect those lines here. You can if you want, because sometimes depending on the fabric, there might be a couple of folds in there like that. You can go like that to suggest the, the wrinkles in the fabric. And that would be a mock turtleneck.
Okay, we have three more necklines to go. We're going to move this aside for later and get started on the next three. So the next one we'll look at is the Archer button-up shirt from Green Line Studios. And that's a little bit more complicated than the ones we've done so far. Uh, you want to take a good look at the pattern flats and also a good look at the model photo. Um, what's interesting about this one is looking at the pattern flats, it shows the buttons going all the way to the top and how that would look with the collar. But all of the model photos show the collar uh, top button being unbuttoned. So we're going to try to draw it that way. And this is how we'll do it. Okay, so first we want to notice where the inside of the collar lands on the neck. And it's a little bit part way up on the neck on each side. So we're just going to make some teeny little dots there as guidelines. And then looking at the model photo, where the collar goes um, down the neck and onto the shoulder. So it's about that wide along the shoulder. And then how long the collar points are, are right around there. So I find the dots really helpful. Um, if this doesn't, doesn't help you, you can skip this step. But that way it's, it's a lot easier to get the both sides symmetrical and have them land on the same parts of the body. All right, and then the V that is formed by the open button at the top um, in these pictures goes around there. Okay, so those are our, our guide points for the connect the dots of drawing the neckline. So I'm gonna start with one side of the collar and it comes around the neck, like that. And then I'm having this collar here and it kind of goes like that. And like that and then so we're going to do the other side coming around the neck over the shoulder and then pointed and then it comes down a bit to that open V kind of like that so we're just keeping it really simple and there we have the open shirt collar neckline um, if you want to get a little bit fancier um, looking at the sketch, you can add that kind of look right there with the, with the shadow of the collar. But that's basically it. And later on, we'll finish this up and add the button placket and things like that. All right, so next we'll be doing the Tropo Camisole by Tuesday Stitches, and we'll be sketching the sweetheart neckline that we can see here in the design flats. And here is um, an illustration that shows the camisole pattern uh, with the sweetheart neckline and an additional strap detail. So we're gonna start on the figure, again, looking at um, making little dots at the end points. First, looking at where the straps land on the shoulders. I would say right there and right there. Um, where the, that sweetheart V neck ends on the chest, which would be right around here. And then the, the top of the camisole would be um, right around there. So I'm going to go ahead and connect these dots to make that sweetheart neckline. And it would curve down like that, like that, Let's go down and down. And we'll go ahead and add these on there. And because there are these little thin straps, we'll go ahead and draw those on there. It's a nice little strap detail. And let's go ahead and add those fun cross straps details down there, down there, like that. Okay, we'll finish that up later. And our final neckline for today is a fun asymmetrical neckline in the Antiope or Antiope knitted pattern by Indigo Dragonfly. And here we can see a model photo that shows that asymmetrical neckline 
And here is an illustration that shows the neckline in a couple of different pattern views. So based on the illustrations and on the model photo, we're going to say that the neckline, that, that asymmetrical neckline would end right around there. And we're going to start from there to there. And then this one comes out like that. We'll call that go around like that. And there's an asymmetrical neckline right there, like a little point. All right, so those are nine examples of different necklines. And next, we're going to look at different sleeve design details. And we're going to sketch them continuing on these same drawings that we've already started. For now, if you like this video, please click the thumbs up below and share and follow us on our YouTube channel. Thank you. Thank you.